Now I have some very exciting news. Since my last video, the James Webb has actually captured images. In this image, each point of light you see represents the same star, a bright sun-like star called HD 84406 in the constellation Ursa Major, about 260 light years away, taken from each of the telescope's 18 golden mirrors. This is the first step in JWST's calibration and alignment process, and during this 25 hour long calibration process, which took place on February 2nd, the telescope subsequently stitched together over 1,000 images amounting to 54 gigabytes of raw data covering an area about the size of the full moon relative to our perspective looking at the sky to produce a single large mosaic that captures the signature of each primary mirror segment in one frame. Essentially, JWST captured 18 blurry images of the same star on its first go, but that's actually an incredibly optimistic start. Since then, NASA released its first in-focus image of a star during its realignment process. This is the highest resolution infrared image ever taken from space. In the background, you can get an idea of just how incredible this telescope is with a view of numerous galaxies that are billions of light years away and have never been observed before, tempting our curiosity with a glimpse of what awaits and what this telescope is capable of. This launch, the unfolding and realignment process of the James Webb has exceeded NASA's expectations. But wait, there's more. What's even more phenomenal about this image is that it is considered a deep field image, which means it's an image that's captured the most distant objects we can see in the universe. The Hubble telescope, comparatively, would take days if not weeks to capture the same kind of image. And the James Webb? Well, it can create this high-res image in just hours, leaving us science geeks in incredible anticipation. What is up, Space Cadet? Last we left off, we were talking about the launch of the amazing James Webb Space Telescope. And this telescope is the successor of the Hubble Space Telescope. And at 100 times the power and six times the light collecting surface, this telescope is going to be able to peer back very, very far in space and time. It's going to be able to see some of the very first galaxies and stars that were ever formed in the universe after the Big Bang. Now, if you haven't seen my last video that covers a little bit of the Hubble Space Telescope and some of its discoveries and goes into detail about uh, what the James Webb Space Telescope will hopefully uncover, please check that out. James Webb is going to be studying so much. We'll be able to study supermassive black holes in the center of galaxies to include our own Milky Way supermassive black hole, which, oh, by the way, is four million times the mass of our own sun. It'll study baby solar systems as they form, and we'll finally get a great deal of information about the mechanics of how celestial bodies, stars, and black holes form. Another very interesting form of celestial body that the James Webb Space Telescope will be looking at. Exoplanets, otherwise known as extrasolar planets. Exoplanets are any and all planets that can be found outside of our solar system. And wow, there are some really cool ones. But I think what we're really all dying to know is whether any of these exoplanets might harbor actual life. And what's really exciting is the potential that the James Webb will have to study the chemical composition of these planets. Because of its infrared lighting capability, it can actually map out the elements of each of these planets. Now our own Earth is comprised of 21% oxygen, 78% nitrogen, 1% of argon, and 0.1% of other gases, including carbon dioxide. So we can get a pretty good idea based on what we know about our planet and our solar system of what distant worlds would look like that would have a high probability of being able to sustain life of some form. And there are a number of factors and elements that are involved in determining whether or not that's possible and whether these planets might hold amoebas or complex animals and creatures, or quite possibly more advanced life forms similar to hominids. 
The ability to study chemical compositions of exoplanets using infrared spectroscopy for the first time with a telescope of this magnitude is absolutely groundbreaking. Without going into too much detail, spectroscopy essentially just means to look at or measure spectra or spectrum, and in this case the light spectrum or wavelength of light. In 2009, the Kepler Space Telescope was launched with its main mission being to study exoplanets. To date, it has discovered 2,662 exoplanets. And while other telescopes, to include the Hubble, have discovered many exoplanets, Kepler certainly by far has discovered the most. Currently, we have discovered over 4,000 exoplanets. We've just been waiting for the right technology to be able to uncover more information about these mysterious celestial bodies. Now, the real question that astronomers ask themselves time and time again when they peer out into the vast unknown is, will we ever discover once and for all, do we really occupy billions and billions of light years of space all alone? Self-help author Mel Robbins announced that the odds of you being born are staggering. Scientists have calculated the odds of you being born. That's right, they've crunched the numbers. I see you up there. <laughs> they have crunched the numbers on you. Yeah, no, you guys standing up, you want to sit down for this. <laughs> they've crunched the numbers on you being born. And they took into account all of the wars and the natural disasters and the dinosaurs and everything else. And do you realize that the odds the odds of you, yeah, right here, put your computer away, stand up for me, Doug. <laughs> so the odds of Doug here, turn around, say hi to everybody. The odds, oh. yeah, of Doug, Doug being born at the moment in time he was born to the parents you were born to with the DNA structure that you have, a hundred, or no, one and four hundred trillion. Isn't that amazing? I'm so lucky. Yes. <laughs> You're not fine. You're fantastic. You have life-changing ideas for a reason, and it's not to torture yourself. Thank you. These odds were likened to, imagine there was one life preserver thrown somewhere in some ocean, and there is exactly one turtle in all of these oceans swimming underwater somewhere. Probability that you came about and exist today is the same as that turtle sticking its head out of the water in the middle of that life preserver on one try. <laughs> That's a lot to take in. So if life is so rare, should we just pack up shop and give in to the inevitable possibility that we are completely alone? There are two scientific ideas that are considered when discussing the idea of discovering alien life. One is the Drake equation. No, not that Drake. This Drake. Frank Drake came up with the Drake Equation in 1961 to estimate the number of civilizations in our galaxy whose signals we might be able to detect, potentially thousands according to various plausible estimates. The other is the so-called Fermi Paradox, thought up by Enrico Fermi in casual conversation in 1950, which posits the conflict between the lack of clear, obvious evidence for extraterrestrial life and the relatively high possibility for their existence. It claims that we should see intelligent aliens here if they do exist anywhere because they would be spacefaring throughout the galaxy, and yet we haven't. So why haven't we? Well, there are many ideas on that, but here are the most popular. Number one, there are no spacefaring civilizations because A, there hasn't been enough time in the development of the universe for them to evolve to that point, much like us, or B, it simply isn't possible because it defies the laws of physics. Number two, according to theoretical physicist Dr. Michio Kaku, any spacefaring civilization signaling us or openly visiting us in any way would be similar to you stooping down to speak to an ant on the sidewalk. And I mean, if you were able to travel galactically, would you stop to talk to us? And hey, let's not forget those movie plots where the aliens come to destroy us all and then they all die of germs and diseases that they weren't immune to. So what makes us think that there's life out there? I know most of us have seen those YouTube videos where they show every planet in the solar system 
and subsequently huge stars, nebulae, and even galaxies to scale. But I don't think this truly shows an accurate portrayal of how insanely big the universe is. The closest star to us is Alpha Centauri at 4.24 light years away, or 9.5 trillion kilometers distance. To put that into perspective, if Voyager 1 was headed straight for Alpha Centauri at its current location 23 billion kilometers from our current location, and traveling at 17 kilometers per second, or 11 miles per second, it would still take it 70,000 years to reach Alpha Centauri. Furthermore, if you were to drive your car to Alpha Centauri at 100 kilometers per hour, it would take you over six times longer than the age of the current universe. Farewell and Godspeed to our Rocket Man and the Tesla Roadster somewhere out there. There are well over 100 billion stars and over 100 billion planets inside of our Milky Way galaxy. And that's only what we're sure of with our current technology. That number could increase by a factor of two with more advanced technology, such as the James Webb. Furthermore, our radio signals that we've sent out since the early 1900s have only reached an area of space this far out, meaning no other aliens would have captured those radio signals outside this territory. Our galaxy spans a distance of 100,000 light years across, and yet it's nothing compared to the gargantuan size of many of the other galaxies that exist out there. Our galaxy resides within a local group of 54 galaxies. Think of it as our galaxy neighborhood, which spans about 10 million light years across. Zooming out even further, and we can see the Virgo supercluster. Think of it as the town or city we live in, where 100 other groups like our local group or neighborhood reside, spanning a distance of an astonishing 110 million light years across. The Virgo supercluster comprises anywhere from 1300 to up to a potential 2000 galaxies, but is incredibly just another blip on the map in the neighborhood of a body of approximately 100,000 galaxies, known as the Laniakea Supercluster, that spans 520 million light years from one side to the other. Superclusters are considered to be some of the largest structures known in the universe, despite the inexplicable pull of the mysterious dark energy that increasingly pulls matter in the galaxy apart over time local and superclusters are gravitationally bound. Even within these massive superstructures are many galaxies whose centers contain black holes that are anywhere from hundreds to millions of times more massive than our own sun. The largest supermassive black holes astronomers have ever found are at the center of gravitationally bound galaxy superclusters. The Phoenix Cluster Central Black Hole, for example, located approximately 5.8 billion light years from Earth, exhibits stars that are forming at a furious rate. This incredible black hole has an estimated 20 billion solar masses. That's 20 billion times more massive than our Sun. This makes it one of the most massive black holes known in the universe currently. And amazingly, it's 5,000 times the mass of the black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. Despite the unfathomable size of everything we just attempted to take in, the Laniakea supercluster is yet again another speck in the sea of what we know as the observable universe. This is a visualization of what astronomers call the cosmic web, a structure of superhighways and filaments of gas, dark matter scaffolding that gravitationally bind galaxies and galaxy superstructures together, and a total of at least two trillion galaxies, each of which combined contain more stars than there are grains of sand on Earth. The distance from Earth to any side of the observable universe is 46.5 billion light years, which means the entire width of the observable universe is 93 billion light years across. And this is just what we're able to observe from Earth through our telescopes. 
since the universe burst into existence 13.7 billion years ago, it continues to expand exponentially thanks to dark energy. What lies beyond the observable universe has accelerated so far past the speed of light that we will never ever be able to see it, even if Earth were to last for an eternity, as the light will never be able to reach us. So, all right, my mind is officially blown. Is yours? It should be. Please check out my part two video if you are interested in learning more about some of the incredible exoplanets in our universe, some of which the James Webb Space Telescope will be looking further into and studying to uncover much more information about including their chemical composition and whether it's possible that they might be able to support life. Or maybe they rain molten iron or glass or have insane winds or they're made of diamonds. Some of the things that exist out there in the universe are just absolutely mind boggling and I hope that you're ready to learn more. Just wanna say I really appreciate all my new subscribers. Please like if you haven't already subscribed and comment down below and let me know what do you think? Do you think that there's life out there or do you think we're alone? Are you like me? Because I personally think there has to be a plethora of life out there. There is such a vast amount of space in the universe that I submit that there are life forms that exist in the universe that we couldn't even begin to imagine. Hey guys, it's Galaxy... Hey guys, it's Galaxy Girl X from the future. Well, the future of that video, but still your past. Anyway, my lighting's not as good and I don't have my background up, but I just wanted to say that I am sorry that I haven't gotten any videos out in the timing that I was promising in the previous video. Um, I will be moving from Germany back to the United States very soon. And a lot of other things have become a priority over this channel, but I promise if you stay tuned, I will have good stuff for you coming up here in a practical amount of time in the future. A practical amount of time in the future. Anyway, if you liked guys, uh, please like, subscribe, comment, tell me what you'd like to hear about black holes, exoplanets, you name it. I want to talk about it. So if you like space, you're in the right place. So remember, keep looking up.